Welcome to the Astrology Show with your host, Kelly Fox. Each week, Kelly will give you access to the current transits that are a valuable tool which provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has through our sun sign. Understanding the current planetary influences each week can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. Sometimes events in your life may seem completely random, but there is a pattern to the order of these events. One set in motion in part by you and in part by the planets and stars in the sky and their influence on your life here on Earth. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, if you're going to get that promotion, move to a new city, or fall in love, tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. It can help you anticipate problems before they occur, give you tools to cope with changes, and help you look forward to the wonderful days ahead. Kelly Fox is a professional astrologer and internet pioneer who launched Astrology.com, one of the first and most successful astrology websites. Today, her passion lies with her new site, TheAstrologer.com, where she brings a modern-day approach to an ancient wisdom. Please join Kelly each week to learn more about how the planets can align for you. Hi there, and welcome to The Astrology Show. I am your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox, and I am going to be talking about the planets this week and what a line-up we have. So the headlines of the week are Mars, warrior planet Mars, is turning retrograde. This is huge, huge news. For lots of reasons, and I will cover all of those reasons later on in the show. Uh, and this week we also have communication planet Mercury moving into Leo. Uh, it's going to be there for an extra long cycle because it turns retrograde, but that's not until the end of July. Uh, and I will talk a lot more about that in tonight's show. And finally, the other headline of the week is that we have a full moon. Uh, we have a full moon in Capricorn, and that is occurring on Wednesday. And this is not a regular old full moon. This is one that involves Pluto, Lord of the Underworld. So there you have it. A uh, lot going on this week, uh, which, um, you know, is a little bit more than usual, but we are coming into eclipse season, July and August, and that retrograde Mars that I was talking about will be kicking into full gear uh, from its retrograde position. And any time you hear an astrologer mention the word retrograde, you know that it is not such a good thing. So uh, without instilling any more fear, I am going to talk about the full moon. I think that would be a really good place to start uh, on tonight's show because, um, you know, we have a full moon every month. Next, The next full moon, so this full moon is happening on Wednesday, next month's full moon is actually going to be a lunar eclipse. So um, this is sort of like we're coming into eclipse season next month. And we're going to have two solar eclipses and one lunar eclipse. So this full moon is occurring in Capricorn at around six degrees. So this is a word of caution for the cardinal signs or anybody that has planets in cardinal signs. And the cardinal signs are Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn. And as I said, this is not just a regular old run-of-the-mill full moon. Um, it is involving, excuse me, did I say Pluto before? I meant to say Saturn. Um, <laughs> I, yes, it involves Saturn. I was just double-checking in my calendar and I thought something didn't sound right. Um, it's just as bad as Pluto, so, uh, you know, n nothing. I didn't steer anybody in the wrong direction, but this full moon is involving Saturn which is um, Lord of Karma. It's not Lord of the Underworld like Pluto is. It's Lord of Karma. So 
So that's going to be uh, really interesting how this full moon in Capricorn that um, is coming together with Saturn, how that is going to play out this week. So normally with the Capricorn full moon, um, it's all about career and our long-term plans, and especially with the involvement of Saturn. Um, it's about where we're going, what direction are we facing, and making decisions, as I say all the time, because Saturn uh, is currently in its uh, favourite sign of Capricorn, uh, as well as Pluto in Capricorn. So uh, for everybody, it's all about making long-term plans, making decisions based off long-term thinking and strategizing. So it's like every decision we make, especially this week, because of this full, full moon in Capricorn um, sitting right next to Saturn, it's all about making long-term plans um, and making decisions based from the long term. It's also a really great energy um, for, uh, for career moves or career decisions at this time um, and thinking through where we want to be in one year, five years, ten years, that sort of thing. Oh, and just another, another, um, just another side note. If you don't know where your planets are besides your sun sign, go to my website, get a free chart wheel, and each week on the show you can follow along to see uh, where all your, excuse me, where all your natal planets um, were, or where all the planets were at the time of your birth. It'll be really insightful um, for each show to see how each of these planetary influences will be and are affecting you. So back to the full moon. We've got a Capricorn full moon, uh, which will be affecting people, uh, the cardinal signs or people that have any planets in the cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn. So with the Capricorn full moon, it's all about thinking long term. It's all about, you know, what do we want? Where are we going? It's about respecting authority as well. Um, so if your boss asks you to do something, and sort of think through the consequences of not doing what the boss might request. And also, yes, pay attention to any sort of authority. It doesn't matter if it's your boss, your employer. It could be any sort of legal, law, um, anybody, any law enforcement officer, anybody like that, um, be respectful uh, because Capricorn, um, it can see things through for a very long time. In other words, think of the symbol of Capricorn as the mountain goat and the mountain goat, well, actually it's the sea goat. So the sea goat starts from the very bottom of the ocean and its whole plan is to work its way up to the very top of the mountain. So that's the symbol of Capricorn. If that gives you any idea about this sign, think of the symbol. And that goes for any sign, not just Capricorn, but um, each, each of the 12 signs of the zodiac has a symbol or an icon or a glyph. And so that's representative of the characteristics of each of the signs. So this week we've got a full moon. It's occurring in Capricorn and uh, it's conjunct or right next to Saturn, Lord of Karma. Now Saturn is all about um, discipline, responsibility, obligation, uh, and it's sitting right with the moon in the full moon in Capricorn. And so the, the moon and Capricorn, excuse me, the moon and Saturn will be opposite the sun in Cancer. So then we've got to find this balance because full moons are all about finding balance, finding compromise. Uh, between cancer, which is our home life and our family, uh, to where we are in the world, our career or our community standing. It's like the path we're on professionally. So it's basically find the balance between our private life and our public life. So um, it's like there, there'll be a delicate balance between um, financial, you know, meaningful employment with the influence of Capricorn, uh, and finding out, you know, where are you in that balance? Uh, you know, the, the support and structure of home and family uh, versus the financial security of meaningful employment. Uh, so it's also a great time to um, 
to think about career strategies, think about where you want to go and where you want to be in your career. Um, it's also a good time to um, investigate uh, career options or um, research the benefits that a certain company has to offer you, um, maybe check out the stock performance or the track record of the business you might be considering um, either working for or investing in. Uh, there should be some diligence at this time with all this Capricorn energy. Uh, now, the ruler of Capricorn is Saturn. So um, Saturn, basically, the influence this week is very Saturnian. So it's about taking care of business, taking care of our responsibilities and our obligations and maybe some aging parents or maybe, um, you know, towing the line when it comes to what our boss is asking of us. Um, and also this energy is very much about boundaries. So uh, just keep boundaries in, in mind as well. So when I break down this uh, influence of the Capricorn full moon, um, it's the sun and moon opposite each other from our perspective here on Earth. And at the moment, the moon is lining up with Saturn. Well, not at the moment. With this full moon on Wednesday, the moon will be right next to Saturn. And both the moon and Saturn opposite the sun. Uh, and, you know, with us on the Earth in the middle of all this pretty, pretty tense uh, energy. So the, each month the moon uh, connects to Saturn as it does with all the planets because the moon moves so fast. Uh, every 28 days it starts a new cycle. So the moon uh, with this full moon will be next to Saturn. Uh, so some of us might feel this energy um, as quite heavy and maybe a little bit melancholy uh, because the moon is about emotions. And Saturn is about um, responsibility, calm, and discipline. But it, it can also, when it connects with the moon, it can make us feel a bit heavy, maybe a bit sad. You know, certainly melancholy. Um, some people might be feeling a little bit pessimistic. You know, as I gave um, a shout out to the cardinal signs, you know, take note of this energy because um, it could be affecting you. That's Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn or anybody that has planets in those four cardinal signs, one of those signs. So with, um, with this full moon connecting with Saturn, um, you know, it's a little bit of a downer. Um, you know, sometimes low energy uh, when the moon and Saturn come together. Um, it might be best to focus inwardly during this week um, under the full moon. Um, some people might be feeling a little bit alone or lonely. Um, maybe our burdens feel heavier than usual. Um, nothing might might uh, be effective when lightening the mood. But just know that this is a really this is a fleeting influence. A full moon uh, is not an influence that hangs around for um, days, weeks, months, even years, as some transits may. It's definitely an influence that happens over the course of the day. Maybe the day before, the day after, the week of. So this full moon's happening on Wednesday. We might be feeling the influences, depending on how sensitive you are, um, and feeling its influences the day before or the day after. Um, but it's not really an influence. It's lingering, um, thankfully. So as I said, full moon in Capricorn, it's coming together with Saturn. Um, so we might be feeling, you know, under the thumb of certain authority figures. Uh, and as, I, as I've been saying, responsibilities uh, might be burdensome at this time. Uh, and, you know, some of us might be feeling a bit too pessimistic to make really effective decisions. Um, so the best solution uh, for this, this heavy, uh, which can be intense energy, is to... Um, just to simply focus on work and serious subjects and just keep thinking the long term, the long term. Um, be careful about squaring off against leadership with this influence. Um, you know, and watch out for random assertions of authority. Um, even government leaders, politicians might be pulling rank, uh, you know, on on us, us little people, as they say. Um, also, this could be some parental issues raising their ugly heads uh, in the form of authority. You know, some people with this influence might find themselves backed into a corner. 
So be careful if you are a manager because um, or a supervisor of some sort because uh, people might be projecting onto you because we have to be careful this week with authority, whatever that means for you, uh, whatever authority is about for you, um, just take care with uh, who your authority is because this full moon will illuminate any sort of issues uh, that we have around authority. But also just um, constructive criticism, and I'm saying that in quotes, air quotes, you know, may be really hard to hear and swallow at this time under this influence. Um, you know, and many, many of us might become painfully aware of our limitations with this full moon in Capricorn connecting into Saturn. Uh, so, you know, but, but just look at the glass as being half full. So improvement can start right here, right now, this week, because we, we're seeing things from a negative point of view, uh, potentially, you know, with its influence of the Capricorn full moon, the involvement of Saturn, you know, Mars turning retrograde, which is happening on Tuesday. So it's like but there's, there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of interesting energy that, that is at odds. And as I said, it's building up into eclipse season uh, that's coming uh, in July. So another good use of this energy is to um, seek the advice of an older person. Uh, Capricorn is a sign of um, a old age and Saturn, its ruler, is definitely, um, you know, the mythology of Saturn was... Um, you know, Kronos, father of time. So then that's that's all about getting older or the wisdom of, of age and with that comes knowledge. So if you're in a bind and um, you, you need, you're need you seeking some advice, um, definitely seek out someone who has many years of experience behind them. Um, that's one really good way to offset this um this, uh, this burdensome energy of the Capricorn full moon and the involvement of Saturn. Um, but just know it's fleeting. You know, in a few days' time, it will be behind us. It will be all over, uh, and then we can move forward again. And uh, But really, keep thinking long-term plans, long-term plans. And on that note, I'm going to take a short break, so stay tuned. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Om Times. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Hi, this is John Andrasik of Five for Fighting, here for RAD, the entertainment industry's voice for road safety. You know, style is a personal thing, and your lifestyle is your business. But if you take it on the road, it becomes everybody's business. So please, plan ahead, designate before you celebrate. Friends, don't let friends drive drunk. A public service announcement brought to you by RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council.
Hi there, and welcome back to the Astrology Show. I am your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox, talking about the planets this week. Just before the break, I was talking about the full moon in Capricorn and how it's hooking up Saturn. So if you're a cardinal sign in Aries, Cancer, Libra, or Capricorn, uh, just know that this influence uh, will be passing soon. Just breathe, seek the advice and authority from an older person. You may know um, older people have the uh, experience of life, the wisdom of life, and perhaps will be able to steer you. And if your boss is breathing down your neck, know that this will pass. Also this week, uh, the big news of the week, the other big news of the week, but the big sort of big, big news of the week is that uh, warrior Mars, action planet Mars, uh, will be turning retrograde on Tuesday. Uh, it will be turning retrograde in Aquarius. Now, this is huge news. Uh, Mars doesn't turn retrograde that often. Uh, and also the retrograde, it turning retrograde, it's been clashing with Uranus in the sky. I don't know if you remember back to um, the show back in May, it was the May 14th show, and I was talking all about Uranus moving into Taurus and Mars moving into Aquarius. And if you missed that show, um, I strongly suggest you go back to the On Times archive and have a listen to that show because what it's what it what I was saying at that time was this is the setup for the rest of the northern hemisphere summer summer all the way through to September. So it's um Uranus planet of the unexpected clashing with Mars, uh warrior planet Mars all throughout the summer. And that's because uh all the planets uh, turn retrograde, which means they keep traveling over the same point three times typically. So with Mars turning retrograde, it's going to clash again with Uranus um, a couple more times because in August, Uranus will be turning retrograde as well. And there's more clashing going on with these two planets. Uh, and anytime you get Mars and Uranus together uh, in a challenging aspect like a square, um, it's all about volatility. Uh, so we all need to be aware of that, especially the fixed signs or anybody that has planets in fixed signs, and that's Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. So if you are a fixed sign, pay attention. Uh, if you don't know if you're a fixed sign uh, or if your other planets are in fixed signs, get a free chart wheel from my website, theastrologer.com, and you can follow along every week, and then you will know exactly what to expect and what is coming your way. So Mars turning retrograde in Aquarius is happening tomorrow, um, and then it's going to be retrograde uh, in Aquarius all the way through August 12th, and then it will continue its retrograde back into Capricorn, uh, until the 27th of August when it will turn direct in Capricorn. It will move forward in Capricorn until September 10th and then September 10th through November 15th, Mars will be back in Aquarius it, all over again. But, but th at that time, it will be direct and it will be past its retrograde and past its clashing with Uranus. Uh, and then we can all sort of breathe a sigh of relief uh, because Mars retrograde, it's all about sort of imploding energy. Uh, anytime Mars, because Mars, the energy of Mars is very masculine, it's very testosterone, it's action-oriented, it's passionate, it's fiery. Uh, but when it's when it's retrograde, all that energy goes inward. It's like... Uh, we're not a volcano exploding. We're, we're more likely we're imploding. Uh, so that's that's just generally the overview of Mars retrograde. Now Mars in Aquarius uh, is is an energy that, and of course it all depends on where it's sitting in your your natal chart, your birth chart, and how that's affecting you. But it's all about if you put those keywords together. Mars is all about assertion and Aquarius is independence and individuality. So basically Mars and Aquarius is all about um, us us as 
everyone out there, us asserting our independence and our individuality, you know, and wanting to break free from other people's expectations and maybe wanting to experiment with expressing more of our authentic self. Um, you know, not worrying about being different or showing that we're different. Um, it's sort of like it's okay to show that we're different. It's okay to know that, you know, we're all one link in a really big, large chain. Um, you know, and, and also with this Mars and Aquarius, uh, especially now that it's retrograde, it's like uh, many of us will not tolerate being told what to do. Uh, and again, if there are any authority issues, now here's the theme of this week, any authority issues are likely to appear now uh, and could get many of us into hot water. Now, before the break, I was talking all about uh, the full moon in Capricorn and it, because it was like connecting with Saturn, it's all about authority. And now with Mars turning retrograde in Aquarius, uh, it's again about authority issues. Uh, and the interesting thing is that Mars is ruled by Uranus uh, but its sub-ruler or its ancient ruler is Saturn. So Saturn Saturn is the planet of the week because of its connection to the full moon uh, on Wednesday. But it's like uh, it also, Saturn is also the ancient ruler of Aquarius, which Mars is in Aquarius. So, you know, the, the theme for this week is about authority respecting authority, uh, not breaking the rules, even though we really, really want to, Mars and Aquarius retrograde, but there will most definitely be repercussions if we do. So Mars is turning retrograde in Aquarius, and that happens tomorrow uh, all the way through September. So this is happening all throughout the Northern Hemisphere summer, or of course the Southern hemispheres winter yes i got it right this week <laughs> last week i was calling it the winter hemisphere uh but this week no i'm on it i'm on it i know what i'm saying i know what i'm talking about um uh, so mars in aquarius mars turning retrograde in aquarius tomorrow um aquarius is a very rebellious sign and so it's like um we we want to we want to be rebellious, but we want to channel them in the right way. Uh, and the best way to do that is um, maybe volunteer uh, for a humanitarian cause, because Aquarius is the philanthropist of the zodiac, so it's all about um, leveling the playing field. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next couple of months uh, with Mars and Aquarius, and then at retrograde, and of course you know, clashing once again with uh, Uranus in Taurus. So, uh, and, you know, Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius. So uh, Mars in Aquarius retrograde is at odds, doubly so, with its own ruler in a sign it doesn't get on with. So there's going to be a lot of resistance going on, uh, maybe many of us insisting on doing things our own way and being a real stick in the mud uh, and, you know, not compromising. And even though, like Aquarius, is all about working with others, with all these other planetary influences going on, um, it really is going to be about uh, finding compromise and, you know, being a team player. Uh, that's going to be really important. And it won't be hard to do because that is the nature of Aquarius anyway. Um, but it's like, you know, in some ways to help us make the best long-term decisions that not only benefit ourselves, but benefits us as the collective and really serves the greater good uh, is what we all should be, you know, looking at and just keep thinking about the repercussions and the consequences and the long-term effects on the decisions that we make now under these influences. So it's like, um, you know, with, with this Mars turning retrograde in Aquarius, it's all about our energies are drawn toward the future, which is really good because, you know, with this Saturnian influence, very strong this week, is all about the future. And having patience, um, having patience for following traditions, which we really, you know, with, with the Aquarian Uran Uranian energy, it's all about futuristic stuff and doing things in a different way. But, you know, Saturn is here on the other side really forcing us to follow these traditions, um, you know, and, and doing things a certain way, uh, but not just because it's, that's how it's always been done. 
So that's what this compromise is going to be throughout the summer is, um, you know, incorporating new values or new new ways of doing things uh, with the old tried and true uh, things that we've always done. So with Mars, Mars turning retrograde in Aquarius, uh, many of us will be uh, feeling very innovative, maybe getting brilliant flashes of um, ideas that are coming out of nowhere. But because Mars is retrograde, uh, and, and clashing with Uranus, it's important to not just leap into something because it just because it's different or just for the sake of being different or new, but really um, sort of trying to meld or mould um, the past with the future is really um, what this energy is about this week and then, of course, going forward. Uh, so Mars retrograde, you know, Mars retrograde in Aquarius, Mars is the planet of energy and action. It entered Aquarius, um, the sign of progress and rebellion, on May 15th, and it immediately um, so did Uranus on that same day, strangely enough, which I thought was really fascinating. Um, these two planets at odds, changing signs, uh, immediately clashing, and then throughout the summertime, uh, this continuous volatility or not knowing how things are going to turn out, um, things being very unpredictable. Uh, it also formed when it moved, when Mars moved into Aquarius, um, it formed a T-square to Venus in Leo and Jupiter in Scorpio, with that, which actually made it um, a grand cross. This is getting sort of technical and complicated, um, but it's like uh, it's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of friction going on, and it's only going to start coming about more and more so um, as as we move on um, the days and the weeks ahead. So when Mars is retrograde, it hinders direct action. Uh, think about it like a, a pot with boiling water with a lid on it. And you know it's it's jumping around and it's um, it's very much about like uh, you know that the lid's going to pop off. There's going to be a lot of steam. There could be some burns. People get hurt uh, with a pot of boiling water. And um, so you know there, there could be a lot of frustration at this time with Mars turning retrograde. Maybe self self doubt um, and people turning their energy. Um, and their anger like inward at themselves and even those closest to them as well. So just think it's more about imploding rather than exploding. Um, you know, and the, the, sti the stifled energy of Mars retrograde, it intensifies because it will be forming a conjunction to the intense Aquarius lunar eclipse on July 27th. Um, this is a really... I would keep saying it's, you know, through the summer we've got this imploding energy, um, you know, the boiling pot of water with the lid on it. Uh, we need to have patience uh, and we need to have patience and tolerance as this boiling water goes on. Um, but this lunar eclipse on July 27th, Mars, um, Mars connects with this lunar eclipse, which is also happening in Aquarius. So Mars is sitting right next to this lunar eclipse. Um, which is all about volatility anyway, with this square from Uranus in Taurus. Oh, there's so much going on. Um, and this, this sort of energy that we can be expecting, it's um, restriction, it's reaction, it's emotionally intense because it's a lunar eclipse. And it's all about instinct as well. Um, so it's like there might not be any sort of direct expression of feeling. It might be a way that might surprise us or that we hadn't anticipated. Uh, so, you know, and as I said, when, um, just looking back through my calendar here, when Mars, when Mars moved into Aquarius, um, you know, it's, it's like as astrologers, we're, we've been anticipating um, the energy of 2018 for a long time, you know, and, and what's to come about because, there's a lot of, uh, for the fixed signs, you know, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, you know, there's a lot of this um, energy that's shaking up the energy of those signs uh, because those signs can be a little bit stubborn, the fixed signs. So it's a time to sort of 
change direction, but we can't, we won't do it willingly. We've got to do it because something comes about. It's like uh, something shakes us up and it helps us to sort of to move forward. Um, so, you know, back to that, um, I'm just looking at the calendar to see what degree Jupiter will be at. Jupiter is a planet of excess. And so uh, it's currently in Scorpio, and so that's clashing with um, Mars and Aquarius as well. There's a lot of clashing and fixed energy going on. So it's like people will be digging their heels in. That you know, compromise is the key word, but that might be very hard to come by. Uh, so when Mars Mars turning retrograde this week. Um, it will be forming uh, a square to this, uh, you know, not a wide square, it's about four degrees orb. Uh, we'll be forming a square to Jupiter in Scorpio. So um, so you, we've got, you know, on one hand we've got Mars and then it's uh, forming this square to both Scorpio and then um, Uranus. So, you know, it, it might make people foolishly optimistic or you know, they might act out in a brazen, maybe gluttonous manner because of the involvement of Jupiter in excess. Um, a lot of people will be obstinate, refusing to compromise. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of tension going on, a lot of frustrations, impatience. Uh, you know, and as I said, Jupiter is, you know, very widely opposed by Uranus uh, in Taurus. So it's like there's a lot of rebellion, a lot of... Um, as I said, people feeling frustrated, um, some emotional instability with the involvement of the eclipse, the lunar eclipse on July 27th. Um, so it's like people want to take action, but it's like we're sort of going to rush and charge into something without really sort of thinking things through, thinking things through or making a plan. Um, so Mars retrograde, in, no matter what sign it is, is always going to be irrational and wanting to rush ahead and uh, do things out of frustration or lash out um, because of frustration um, and that sort of thing. So, and it's going to be retrograde um, in Aquarius all the way through August 12th, and then Mars will retrograde back into Capricorn, uh, and it will widely form a conjunction to Pluto. Uh, yes, it is a good time to take a break. Uh, so be, stay with me. Uh, we're going to take a short break and I will continue with the planets this week. The Real Conscious Connection. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are, you are the, inspired the inspired and, and the inspiration. inspiration. This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hi there. Welcome back to the Astrology Show. I am your host and astrologer Kelly Fox. 
talking about the planets this week. And uh, we've got a full moon in Capricorn. And just before the break, I was talking about warrior planet Mars turning retrograde. Now, this is really big news because uh, it's it's clashing with uh, other planets in the sky, uh, namely Jupiter and Uranus. And so there could be uh, compromise will be needed. How about that? But, you know, there is a silver lining. I was sort of a bit of bit of uh, voice of doom and gloom before the break but it really is intense energy uh, for the next couple of months and uh, the silver lining uh, to this fixed Mars retrograde is that it will force us to have patience and perseverance Uh, so it's like you know we might want to throw in the towel on um, different things especially if you're a fixed sign and that's really saying something Uh, fixed signs Taurus Leo Scorpio, Aquarius, um, but it will force us to have patience and persevere with our plans. Um, now, Mars retrograde typically presents the struggle, uh, and it does gauge uh, to be a measure of our strength of will and determination. Uh, so, basically, Mars retrograde with all this other heavy uh, energy and influence, you know, square to Jupiter, square to Uranus, um, you know, the message is Never give up, no matter how hard the circumstances may be. And then on August 2nd, uh, continuing with Mars retrograde, that's when, once again, it will form a square to Uranus. The first time was May 16th, after both planets changed sign. uh, Immediately, they formed a square, Mars square, Mars Mars square Uranus. It's happening again on August 2nd, and I also said before the break that Mars retrograde was hooking into the lunar eclipse on July 27th. That's really huge news. Uh, It's happening again. uh, August 2nd, Mars retrograde will form a square to Uranus in Taurus. Um, It's a very intense period. Um, Tempers may flare. Um, There could be some intensely unpleasant events that might occur. But it's all about our reaction and our response to what is going on. so, you know, the news is always doom and gloom on the news, but, it, you know, especially at these times with Mars forming a square to Uranus, um, you know, look out for explosions and violence and unrest and revolution. Uh, so revolution's definitely on the cards here, you know, uh, regardless of your political views, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff happening um, in the news. Uh, revolution is a key word that immediately comes to mind. Now, when uh, Mars and Uranus changed sign and then formed a square back mid-May, that was when we had the volcano uh, really erupting more than usual uh, in Hawaii. And I thought that was really fascinating because I think the news came about exactly on the day that uh, Uranus moved into Taurus and then, of course, was squared, uh, hit by Mars. So uh, with with Mars Mars forming a square to Uranus, uh, it's all about like, you know, many of us might be feeling we've put up with things for too long and then suddenly they become intolerable, especially with this Mars retrograde. Uh, Many of us might become impulsive and rebellious and maybe overreact to the slightest provocation, Uh, you know, and a lot of us. Uh, Not naming any sign names, Aries, but uh, they've got no patience for anyone and, you know, we might not be able to conceal it. Uh, Many of us will have a short fuse with this influence and be headstrong uh, and dare let anyone try to challenge us. Uh Uh-oh. So um, just be careful with this uh, energy throughout the summer. A lot, there's a lot going on. This is just the start of it. Uh, so it's good to find compromise and work with others. Now, the other news of the week, I know, can you believe there's more news? Um, Mercury, planet of communication, moves into Leo, uh, where it will be until September 5th. Now, this is an extra long cycle uh, due to the retrograde, Mercury, the dreaded Mercury retrograde, uh, on July 25th through August 18th. Now, Mercury is a planet of communication, and it doesn't really like being with Leo. It's quite uncomfortable in with this sign, and especially when it's going to be retrograde. So uh, when Mercury is with Leo or is in Leo, uh, many of us might be filled with big ideas and grand plans, 
Uh, we're not worried about the details. We're more interested in the broader vision of what we want to create. We're going to be very confident in our own opinions. Uh, be careful for arrogance and maybe getting too wedded to being right. Although on the flip side, you know, many of us, while Mercury is in Leo and then, of course, retrograde um, through all the way through September 5th, which is a really long time, um, you know, our mind might be youthful and curious and um, we're thinking creatively and wanting to get a fresh perspective on an old problem. Um, it's, it's a good use of energy to sort of look with the innocent eyes of a child uh, and being surprised by the wonder of it all. So that's the good part about uh, Mercury in Leo. Uh, many of us might have a flair for drama, life at the party. Um, be careful about embellishing stories with extravagant details. Uh, many of us might be expressing ourselves with authority, which of course is the key word for this week. You know, with the full moon in Capricorn with Saturn and then we've got Mars turning retrograde in Aquarius. It's sort of like authority seems to be the flavor here. Um, and whatever authority means to you or whomever authority might be to you, um, just pay attention and try not to dig heels in and look for that compromise. And keep thinking of the long term and the repercussions, I would say, would be my best advice I can give to you. Now, the aspects that Mercury will be making while it is in Leo, I'm just going to whiz through these really quick. Um, on Saturday, the 30th, Mercury will be forming a square to Uranus and Taurus. Uh-oh. I mean, everything feels like everything's squaring and clashing up there in the sky at the moment. So with Mercury forming a square to Uranus this weekend, um, be extra careful when driving or walking around because accidents can happen easily under this influence. It's like we might have momentary lapses of attention um, or be in too much of a hurry which can lead to uh, incidents that um, we might regret later. And as I keep saying, keep thinking of the long-term repercussions. Uh, you know, the short attention spans um, can really create some problems if we're not focused and not on it. Um, you know, and just speak simply uh, to head off any sort of miscommunication because even though Mercury is not retrograde right now, it's going to be. It's, it's moving into Leo and then it will turn retrograde. Um, very, very soon. So on July 5th, uh, we've got Mercury forming an opposition to Mars, <coughs> excuse me, to Mars. So be careful with this because um, Mercury opposite Mars is all about, uh, and remember Mars will be retrograde. So people might be blurting anything out that comes to their mind. Uh, people might be feeling impatient, impulsive, argumentative. So just be very careful with this Mercury about to turn retrograde, forming a square to Mars, which will be retrograde. And that's July 5th. So watch out for that. And then July 9th, we've got Mercury forming a square to Jupiter, uh, which goes direct the next day. And so it squares it three times. So Mercury squared Jupiter, it's exaggeration. That's the first key word that jumps out at me when I think of Mercury squared Jupiter. So we're not thinking very practical. Uh, we're trying to ignore details with this influence. Uh, but it's important to remain open uh, to other people's opinions and input. Uh, especially because these uh, two planets will be in fixed signs. So be very careful around miscommunication, um, negligence, and um, embellishment or exaggeration. Uh, just be very careful. And also try to avoid a know-it-all attitude um, around this type of uh, influence. And then on July 25th, Mercury turns retrograde in Leo at 23 degrees. So uh, the thing to be aware of here, and it's retrograde all the way through September 5th, so all through August, we have uh, retrograde Mercury. And uh, so what this is about, it's about passionate responses. It's sort of like we're stuck in our own opinion. We might not like what someone else says, and we have a very strong reaction or a very strong opinion around what is being said, of, said to us, uh, but it might not be um, 
our response might not be quite so accurate. So be very careful about just diving into something with a response without having all of the information first. So it's about passionate responses. Um, but a good use of this energy is creativity. And then on August 10th, uh, Mercury forms that square to Jupiter for the second time. Uh, so it's all about um, embellishment and exaggeration. And then on August 18th, Mercury uh, forms a sextile to Venus and uh, it's also getting ready to turn. I'm just looking in my calendar here. Uh, it's getting ready to, well, soon it will turn direct. Uh, so, you know, at the end of August, there's some really great influences happening. Um, you know, we've got a grand Earth trine and then we've got this uh, Mercury, Venus sextile. It's actually quite nice. Um, last two weeks of August. And then August 27th, uh, we've got the final Mercury squaring Jupiter, uh, which, because the planet's retrograde, that's what happens. And then, of course, Mercury, oh, September 3rd, Mercury sextiles Venus again. Fav very favourable for communication. And then September 5th, Mercury moves into Virgo. And there we have it. Mercury uh, in Leo is doing a lot and will be there for quite a while. Now, the other planetary aspects this week, uh, Monday, today, Venus squaring Jupiter. Wow, it just seems so mild compared to everything else going on. Uh, Venus square Jupiter. Now, Venus and Jupiter are the two most favourable planets uh, of all, and they're at odds with each other. This is all about self-indulgence and, um, again, excess, um, and our self-discipline uh, might be at an all-time low under this influence. Uh, and with the Saturnian influence going on with the full moon and then Mars turning retrograde, uh, let's not sort of go to food to comfort ourselves uh, with Venus squaring Jupiter. It's also not a good uh, week for in, uh, financial investments. Uh, and then on Saturday, as I mentioned, Mercury will be forming a square to Uranus. So just be very careful with communication and disruptions. Now for your weekly horoscope. If you're an Aries, um, maybe resentment and bitterness might be holding you back at work. Uh, you could have been passed over or you're not getting the recognition you feel de you deserve. But it's important to address this calmly yet assertively this week and make clear your value to your employers. Remember, the key word here is uh, respect authority. If you are a Taurus, injustice or unfairness is likely to make you very angry. Um, but instead of internalizing your anger, put your energy to good use by trying to create change. Um, form a campaign or start a petition or lobby people. Act positively and don't implode. Uh, if you're a Gemini, interpersonal jealousy is getting you down. So take a step back. Um, you're responsible for your own life and your own happiness. What other people do is none of your business. So stop begrudging others' pleasure and instead seek your own. And if you're a Cancer, uh, have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with your sweetheart this week and try to resolve any lingering resentments within your relationship. Um, intimacy issues may be especially painful just now, um, but with plenty of love and patience, you will definitely get there. If you're a Leo, it's the minutia of life which bothers you this week. Um, untidy rooms, people who are late, things which are overlooked. So ease your stress with lots of meditation or creative downtime. Uh, drop the perfectionism. Uh, mistakes are perfectly okay. And if you are a Virgo, uh, you may take your anger out on someone very expressively this week. Uh, although a shock to the recipient, this is actually healthier than your normal tactic of repressing your feelings. So let it all out, but be sure to apologize to your poor victim after if you need to. Uh, if you're a Libra, deep-seated family issues may bother you this week, perhaps from long ago in the past. Um, but don't allow these issues to linger any longer. Enough is enough. Call a family meeting or go and meet the people concerned. Draw a line under the past. If you are a Scorpio, don't leave it too late to apologize to someone or to heal a rift. You know what needs to be said, so say it, even if you have to make the first move, and even if it wasn't originally your fault. Life is way too short to bear these sort of grudges. If you are a Sagittarius, uh, money problems may cause angst within a relationship or depression within your own mind. So take positive action now to sort out your finances and seek expert help if necessary. There's a lot you can do to improve the situation, so start today. 
If you're a Capricorn, uh, make a conscious effort to love yourself this week. You're much too hard on yourself always, but now it's starting to affect your confidence and your self-esteem. Use the full moon energies to forgive, uh, starting with yourself. If you are an Aquarian, um, instead of seething inwardly, turn your frustrations into positive action this week. You have kept your feelings hidden for far too long, so now is the time to speak up. Uh, whether you're proven right or wrong, you'll feel so much better. And also because Mars, uh, warrior planet Mars, is in your sign. So it's like really important to, um, you know, have an outlet for your frustrations or your impatience. Um, it's going to be very important, uh, not only this week, but really throughout the Northern Hemisphere summer. And finally, if you are a Pisces, a sweet Pisces, you know, perhaps a friend uh, may let you down or disappoint you this week, uh, but don't be too quick to cut the ties with this person um, unless you have concrete evidence err on the side of caution, which you are very good at doing anyway. Um, you know, perhaps your friend made a mistake and um, Pisces has a very compassionate, caring nature. So it won't be too hard to uh, look for the best in this situation rather than focusing on your hurt and the worst of it, especially with this full moon in Capricorn uh, connecting up to Saturn. So... That's it for me. Uh, thank you for joining me and I wish you a great week and be sure to tune into next week's show. I'm your host and astrologer Kelly Fox and this is The Astrology Show.